guys, what's going on? It's Steph here. I hope you've been well. I know I have. And this week's episode brings us to an early 1800s standing homestead I've had permission to for a few years now. Every time I go, I find something that keeps me going back. So although the signals are getting a little bit sparse, I was still able to make a great video out of two separate hunts that I did there about a month ago. Not to mention, I found my biggest piece of silver for 2021 thus far. So I'm really excited to share that with you. We're going to hop in. But first, as a reminder, I now sell metal detecting equipment for the Digger's Den. So if there's anything you're looking for at all, make sure you reach out to me at this reach info below. Or if you already know what you want and you see that it's in stock, go ahead and feel free to use my code at that website above. As an additional reminder though, if you need anything my lab related, definitely hit me up first. All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's hop in. All right, out at one of my yard permissions today and the signals are really, really popping because we just had a lot of rain. Um, I dug something right there. I think it was a shotgun shell. Yeah, that was the shotgun shell. <laughs> so non-ferrous anyway. Got a 16, 17 signal. It was reading eight to 10 inches down, which was correct. It was right at the bottom of the plug. And I pulled this out. I thought it was junk and I guess it kind of is because it's broken. But you can see there, there's an impression, which is a maker's mark for a spoon. So the very end of it is broken off and then the neck and the bowl, unfortunately, but that's cool. That's probably early 1800s, so makes sense for where we're at. I'll keep you posted. Well, I'm really realizing I've neglected the front yard at this permission. <laughs> um, I just dug three wheats. They were like maybe six inches apart each. And then I got another similar signal, a little lower. Evidently it was right on the top of the plug because I knocked it out and I did cheat and looked. Uh, we have an Indian. Sorry, I was just waiting for some cars to go by. I don't have a year yet, but I will come right back with one. Oh, wait. 70, 78 or 79. That's going to be in good shape. Let me brush it off. Okay, well, I walked away from my machine, which is right on the side of the road right now, so i got to make this quick. But I just didn't want there to be so much wind noise. It is indeed an 1879. So close to the 77, yet so far away. Thank you so much, motorcycle. I was talking. And the back's in pretty good shape, too. This is going to clean up beautifully. You can kind of see. Ooh, there we go. There's just an edge of green poking. There you go. So that might have a nice patina under the dirt. We shall see. But I'm happy with that. Okay, well, I got a really good target. I'm right across the driveway in the other part of the front yard. There's the road, and you can certainly hear the noise. So I got an 18-19 signal, eight inches down. And I think I have an early rose up here. I looked at it really quick and then turned the camera on. Yep, that is what that is. So that'll be pewter with a copper face in the middle, probably. And um, it should have some silver wash on it. Let's see if it has the hardware. Nope, it doesn't have the hardware in there. It would have had a bar right here, a brass bar that would have, or copper, I guess, um, that would have helped to fix it to the bridle. So that's really cool. I'm gonna brush that off and come back. That's a beautiful piece. All right, so I backed up from the road about uh, 100 feet. You can still hear the cars a little bit, but it's not so bad. Um, this is gorgeous. I think this is going to have a lot of silver wash left on it. And you can now really easily see where the pin used to attach to the back. I'm going to go mid-1800s on this. I think that's a pretty solid guess. Maybe early 1800s, but I'm leaning towards the mid-1800s. That's an awesome piece. I love finding these. Okay, so I got a 12 signal about six inches down. Um, I just dug a copper memorial over there. I have a nickel in the hole here. It's not very far from where I found a buffalo in the past, so I really don't know what kind it is yet. Hopefully it's not just a modern Jefferson, but we will see. Let's see, pop the dirt off, it's satisfying. And it's a Jefferson, dang it. Oh well, at least I got that Indian today. How old is this thing? Let's see. As if anyone really cares because it's clad. Um, and I don't care. So we're going to move on now. Hmm. Well, I got another target. Not super duper exciting. I already took a peek at what it was. And it was right at the base of this tree, though. So I didn't think it was going to be anything more than a zinkin. It was kind of like a 1718 signal. But we have a dog tag. And it actually looks like it's on the older side. Let me get it in the light here. Didn't look at the date yet. And we, oh, wow. Oh, that's an old, that's 1912. You know what? I think that's a record, actually, for this town. Because the last time I found a really old one, 
it ended up in a dog license book. I forget what the heck it's called. If I remember it, I'll put it up on the screen. That's awesome, actually. 1912, 108, or 109 years old. <laughs> forgot it was 2021 for a second. That is really cool. Okay, I think this is going to be the last target of the day. I'm walking towards the car, which is that way, about 100 feet. And I got a 12 signal, six inches down. I see a spoon bowl down there. And I kind of wonder, oh, looks like a, uh, huh, may have got the edge there. Dang it. Yeah, that is all me. I will take 100% credit. Ooh, that stinks. <laughs> Anyway, that's probably early 1800s, just judging by how the neck is uh, styled. Um, yeah, I got nothing else to say about that. I'm kind of bummed that I broke it, but oh well. It's just going to go in one of my mason jars anyway. But a uh, really quick tip before I go, assuming we don't get another target. Um, I'm doing really well in an area that I've been hunting a lot over the last couple of years. Uh, because I turned down the sensitivity on me, my Equinox just a little bit. Uh, it was usually running 23, 24 in this area because um, it's a yard that turns into a hay field. But there's just so much deep, 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 heavy iron that I said, you know what? I don't really want to listen to all that, but I want to hear the iron. So what I did was um, I just dropped the sensitivity a couple points. And that is helping a lot. Unfortunately, my pinpointing skills could use some work. Urgh. Okay, out in a yard today, and I think I'm in an area I haven't really touched much. Just dug a clad dime over there, screaming 25. I would not have missed that in the past, so don't think I'm in here. Got a 30 to 31 signal. Thought it was going to be a clad quarter, but there's something interesting looking in the plug. Almost looks like another silver washed horse rosette, but I don't think that's what it is. What is this, a buckle? It looks like some kind of buckle. I think. It's got to be what it is. Hmm. I'll brush that off and come right back. Well, I brushed it off and now I'm having doubts. <laughs> Might just be a cap or something. I don't really know. It's hard to say. It looks like there's some kind of material in here that's wearing away, like disintegrating. Um, so it could have been attached to cloth. It could be a buckle, but I don't know. There's just no indication of exactly what it was. So if you guys know, let me know. Ooh, I had a feeling silver might be on the agenda today. I can't believe this. Did a really lousy job pinpointing it. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm really excited about this. You can kind of see it. I'm trying to not be in my own light here. I have a silver spoon. I have a silver spoon. And I don't know how old it is, but that's got to be silver coming. Yeah, that is solid silver. That's amazing. And I've been thinking, like, I don't, I haven't dug a solid silver spoon in three years, I just, for whatever reason, I, I don't swing over them. Um, so I'm super excited. <laughs> I'm gonna spray that off and come right back and see if I can get a maker's mark or anything like that. Hopefully indicate how old it is. That is awesome. All right, I sprayed off the spoon and guys, this is way better than I thought it was gonna be. It's got initials on it. That is so cool, I see D-E something um but unfortunately as i was you know rubbing it with the with the water on my fingers um it kind of took out the tarnish from the last initial so i i don't really know um hopefully it'll tarnish back up again it should I, i've dug enough silver to know that that should tarnish back up in a number of months um and in terms of age sorry i'm manipulating this in my hand right now uh it says patent 1897 so pretty old and it's just it's so beautiful this is awesome this makes my day I don't care what else I find now but obviously I'm gonna keep going and I will let you know if I find something else but that's a day maker <laughs> now what's additionally really really super cool about this silver spoon as if a silver spoon isn't exciting enough I actually did manage to match up those initials to some homeowners that lived there between 1875 and 1915, I believe it was. So that matches the time frame of when the spoon was manufactured, and it gives it some provenance, which is really cool. Now, obviously, I can't tell you their names because I need to protect the privacy of my homeowners, but it was really satisfying to identify exactly who that spoon belonged to. Oh, and as you can see, I unbent it because I'm strong like bull. That was really cheesy. Okay, we're gonna get back to the show now. 
Okay, well, I'm in a part of the property that I really haven't ever swung before. Um, I've swung here a couple times, but really only ever dug modern junk until now, because I think I have something pretty cool. Looks like just a piece of sheet brass, kind of, but if we look closer, I believe it's an old thermometer. Let me get that in the sun a little bit. Yep, that's what that is. Old outdoor thermometer. So I'll brush that off real quick and I will come right back. All right, so there it is, I brushed it off, and this is quite a bit older than it probably appears. I have dug one of these before, and it was dated to the late 1700s. Um, it had slightly different uh, numbering here though, so in terms of the style of it. So I would guess this is probably early 1800s. You can see here, we have a zero, freezing, and just bend it over here. Blood heat, that always sounds cool to me. Um, something else, and I can't really read the rest. I did start to unbend it, um, but I have a feeling it's going to break if I'm not really careful. So I'm going to put this in my pouch as is. It's kind of cool. You can see like little remnants of the glass right there. That's awesome. I've only ever dug half of one of these before. It was like, um, it actually got cut off at the ING, so I had no clue what the hell it was. <laughs> so I'm really stoked to have a complete one. That is awesome. I love little oddities like this. I know people don't usually get excited for like bent up and broken relics, but I do when they're cool like that. Well, I may have just done something crazy again. I got that silver spoon earlier, as you remember. And I see one here. It only rang up a 13 or 14 though, so it's really, I, I find it hard to believe that it's actually silver, but you never know. Oh boy, that's gonna take me a while. I'll be back when that comes out. Okay, looks like I was right. It is not silver. It's silver plated. That was almost fooling me, but by the numbers, I knew that couldn't really be the case. So, hey, it's probably, I don't know, late 1800s, early 1900s, somewhere in there. Not super duper exciting when it's not silver, but hey, we'll take it. Okay, and now I am on the opposite side of the property from where I filmed last time, I think. Anyway, um, in this area, there's a ton of iron, so I cranked up uh, my recovery speed on the Equinox, and I swung over something I know I've swung over before with a lower recovery speed, so, and when it flew out of the hole, I said, wow, that's effing cool. <laughs> Again, reasons I don't have a GoPro. I have this cool, teeny, teeny, tiny little button. That is gorgeous. <laughs> no shank. I think it does have a little back mark though. That I'm definitely gonna brush that off and come back. That is beautiful. I tell me that's not a gorgeous button. Oh my god. Back mark I can't quite read yet, but like I said, that'll be early 1800s. Goes along with the age of the property. That is just gorgeous. You know, I normally I kind of am over digging the tiny little buttons. There's only so many tiny little buttons you can dig and get excited about, but that's a beautiful one. So, as I said in the beginning of the video, some really interesting finds, good finds overall. Very happy with that silver spoon and especially that horse rosette. I'm gonna have to start making a display of just my silver washed horse rosettes because I tend to find a lot of them. Anyway, let's go look at the spread of finds right now. Okay, so let's go over a quick wrap up of what we found here. Uh, let's see, a few things I didn't film were those wheats. I think I have a 1916, 1920 something, and a 1950 something. You can see how much I care about them because I haven't really cleaned them yet. <laughs> uh, this cool piece of pottery was just, you know, an incidental find. It happens a lot when you're digging a plug, pottery will come out as well. So, always keep that. Um, big fat horse tack buckle that I didn't film and it actually did have the iron pin intact until I just came up to my relic room which is actually my in-law apartment and saw that it had disintegrated <laughs> which can happen so uh, but that's okay I like just kind of keeping the brass anyway that will go in the tack buckle mason jar um, this mystery find I'm sure it's a piece of crap but I'm just, just curious as to what it is so if you guys do know what this is um, let me know I know it looks like there's lettering here but there really isn't. I'm sure it's just kind of a cap to something and it's very modern, but um, I'm just curious for future reference so that if I find one again, I'll know what it is. 
All right, and a couple of spoon bowls here. This is that one that I whacked, unfortunately. Um, not that it's in great shape anyway. Uh, right where I found this, um, a structure had burned down. So you can see some pretty clear fire damage in there. Um, so it's not much loss. <laughs> it's not much of a loss, I should say. Um, so yeah, but it's old, so keep it. Uh, this one's not as old, that late 1800s, early 1900s silver-plated spoon bowl, which really had me going since all I could see was like that coming out of the hole. Um, so, yep, that'll also go in my mason jar. I've got mason jars for a few things. I've got them for uh, harmonica reeds, uh, spoons, horse tack buckles, and a couple other things that I always forget until I actually go and look at them. <laughs> so, moving on to some of the better stuff here. This is that little piece of a spoon that I found. I can't make much out on it except for, I think, the Omega symbol right there. Um, and I thought it was going to clean up just a little better so I could at least see how old it was. But no dice. It's still neat, though. So we will keep that. Our 1879 Indian, which didn't clean up too bad. Still some dirt kind of caked down there. But I don't like going too, too far with these. So overall, great shape. And the 70s are always hard to find. Um, but I've been fortunate enough. I probably have like 10, you know, 1870-something Indian head since. So that's good. Our sweet, sweet, sweet little button there. I don't even want to pick it up because I'm afraid I'm going to drop it. I just love that. Love it, love it, love it. Our record-breaking <laughs> dog license. That is the oldest one on record in the town, which I kind of knew when I dug it. I just had a feeling. And that's my second time... Um, having the book updated <laughs> or ma making it so they need to update it. The last one I found, I think, was in Rutland, Massachusetts, and it was only in 1970-something. So uh, I think that was just a case of people not necessarily reporting all the dog tax tags that they found. But, hey, you know, and that cleaned up really nice with a brass brush. So happy with that. That will go in my dog tag display. Um, I am really sorry if I'm going to just give you a total terrible glare right now, which I probably am. Well, maybe not. But this cleaned up just so beautifully. That's why I threw a photo of it in the, you know, in the video. It's just <laughs> stunning. Um, what I actually did with this one is something that I don't typically do for any of my relics to speak of. Um, I actually used a silver polishing cloth on it. And I know a certain someone, who some of you may know as well, um, likes to use those on coins. I don't really believe in doing that, but to each their own. In this case, though, on a relic, it worked really well. And you can kind of see exactly just how brilliant this would have been back in the mid-1800s. So, really cool piece. I love finding those. Our thermometer. <laughs> pretty self-explanatory. I did unbend it. Um, not very pretty, but, you know, it's still a cool item, so we keep those. And find of the day, so far, uh, without a doubt, my biggest piece of silver for 2021. With the beautiful initials in there. Oh, my God. So I was able to uh, just unbend this, <laughs> and I'm so glad that I could because I really didn't want to have to take it to a jeweler if I could afford it. I mean, if I could avoid it. it. It's only like 20 or 30 bucks to get them to unbend this, but, you know, it was rewarding to do it myself and have it come out so beautiful. So um, that was definitely one of my favorite finds this year. I just love finding silver spoons, and it's only the second one I've ever found. So all in all, very good time out there. All right, guys, so that's all the time we have for this week. And remember, get out there, save what you can, do what you love. We'll see you next week.